Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hans of Iron 4 video. Last time I asked you which country I should revisit and you voted for Turkey. So today we're going to play Turkey. I did a video with them already, but let's see how Turkey manages in the newest version of the game. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do yet. I think I'll take all of this, maybe unite the Turan region, or maybe just dominate the world, we'll see. But before we start, this video has a sponsor. This video is brought to you by Conqueror's Blade. Conqueror's Blade is an MMO in which you participate in massive battles, fighting your opponents individually and also with your troops. And I actually did play this game on the channel if you'd like to see some gameplay. The game is free to play on PC and Season 3 Soldiers of Fortune has just started. Season 3 brings with it a new class, new units and new battle pass. The new class, the 11th one, carries a heavy two-handed hammer that can smash through enemies with ease. In the previous season of the game, nobility was driven out by nomads, so now they hired mercenaries to fight back. And that brings in new units, crossbowmen, pikemen, guards and artillery, namely gunners, armed with extremely powerful cannons. And finally, the new battle pass, there's over 100 levels of rewards, and the new class we mentioned before can be earned with them at level 25. And seasonal challenges unlock the new units. If the game looks like something you would enjoy, make sure to click the link in the description below and register an account. Everyone who does so with that link gets a premium account for free for 7 days. Alright, back to Hearts of Iron. Regular difficulty I'm in multi historical focuses, Turkey. Let's go. Political effort, infantry equipment, some factories, some convoys. Switch all these troops to just infantry. I guess I could have kept the mountaineers, but it doesn't really matter. Research, production, research, and doctrine. I guess I'll go with superior firepower. Mass assault is probably better for us, but I've been using it quite a lot. So just to mix things up a bit, we'll do superior firepower this time. And let's go. Ah, Mustafa. Pity we have to switch you to a different ruler. We can't really do anything being non-aligned, we will have to switch to either fascism or communism, and seeing as we would like to conquer a large bit of the Soviet Union, fascism seems like the better pick, because then we can ally the Germans against the Soviets. Political effort complete, we can now afford an advisor. We're going fascist, so let's hire a fascist demagogue and do collectivist ethos. Also, I guess I'll go to two full armies. We have 27, so we need 21 more units. Going to two armies might not be the best choice equipment-wise, but I think we'll have the upper hand once we start fighting, thanks to the number of troops. We'll train them in the field later. We don't have a lot of manpower right now, but that will change soon because of the militarism focus. Construction, please. Nationalism focus. And let's open up political discourse. We can now discredit the government. There are two good moments to do this. You either do this right away when you can, unfortunately that will lower the efficiency at which we gain fascist support, but it will also let us get the fascist events faster, or you do it as late as possible, so when you're at 40%. I could also do it when we reach 20% fascist support, because that's when uh, the growth starts slowing down. But if I do it now, discredit the government, have a look, change was small, but I can also do anti-democratic reigns, which will not only boost fascism, but will also increase our stability. Nationalism focus complete, let's do militarism. I'm gonna need that for troops also, let's deploy some. Hopefully we'll soon get some of... Oh, here it is. Threat of communism, yes. That's exactly what I've been waiting for. 38% fascism already. Now we could do military youth, but uh, these are not urgent for us right now. Let's do industrial effort instead. Once we get to 50%, we do the referendum and start justifying our first war goals. We have 48 units now. Let's switch them all to regular infantry. Set up two armies. We have a desert fighter and a hill fighter. I guess I could hire a new one. Are we going to get lucky? Yes, okay. He's going to be our field marshal. Aggressive assaulter. Once the armies are fully reinforced with manpower, I'm going to start training them. Construction effort. We need one more fascist event. Whatever it is. Let's exercise our troops. Here it is. Fascist assault divisions. Perfect. 49% fascism. Just a moment longer. And we'll be able to do the referendum. Almost there. Hold national referendum. We'll lose some stability, but now we're fascist. We can start just by our first war goal, and our first war goal is going to be Iraq. Oh, they got the advisor, unfortunately. Why Iraq? Well, I want to go east. I could attack Bulgaria, but we also want the strategic access over here. Our next war goal is going to be Iran, but I don't have enough political power to start justifying right now. We'll have to wait a bit longer. Let's hold off on focuses for a while so that we can get enough political power to justify our war goal. There we go, Iran. Anarchist uprising in Spanish Civil War. I need to play Spain at some point. Let's modify our units to be 20 with. Chinese United Front forms. And Hindenburg didn't make it. Japan attacks China. 
I might want to get in on that later. We'll see. For now, I do have my own targets. We have enough political power to modify our country. Let's go to war economy. I guess I could use some more military factories. We'll get on that soon. Spain is done. I do have some planes. Let's assign them. So the army that's going to be attacking Iraq. I think one army will be sufficient here. I don't want to saturate my supply lines. Extra research slot. Actually, what we're going to do is end it at the template that we're using. Duplicate it, call it Elite, and mark it as Elite. And the one army that's going to be fighting first, we're going to switch to it so that they receive equipment faster than the other one. First justification is ready and let's do secret weapons. Time to attack. Iraq. It should go smoothly, gradually breaking through. Secret weapons complete. Time to get some more factories. This attack is going very slowly. Strikes. Expensive option, please. And that should end the war. There we go. Let's annex everything. As for occupation, I guess we'll do local police force for now. Might do military governor later, we'll see. Time to get ready to attack Iran. Unbalanced. Don't want to go aggressive there. And use those secret weapons bonuses on research. Oh, yeah, I don't have political power, so I'm not working on the war god, that's a pity. We'll have to wait a bit. Go back to regular units, everyone. Here also the production front, perfect. Let's not select another focus after this, because we need positive political power so that I can finish my war goal. Time to attack. We have two full armies, not fully equipped, but full of people. It should be okay. I am on balance for now. We don't want to expend too many resources on this attack. It's looking good. Let's just let them do their thing. You guys should be moving forward, shouldn't you? Take this victory point. Oh, there you go. That's it for Iran. Take all states, please. Now what's next? Uh, probably Afghanistan, but we'll have to wait a bit. See, if I started attacking other people right now, uh, the allies would get involved. They would start guaranteeing people. But... We can wait until they're a bit busy. That looks like a bit too much resistance. Let's switch to a military governor for now. Oh, right, I know what the problem is. We can go to local police force, but garrison should have the highest priority for now. Missing guns for garrisons. That is an issue. That will soon be taken care of. Actually, since you have nothing to do right now, really, just garrison everything here and see if we can lower the resistance that way. I hope they didn't remove that option. Are my forces going to have any impact? It doesn't look like it, no. I mean, I do like the new management system, I just wish you could affect it with having lots of troops in a territory. Let's do atomic research, just for the research bonus. The death of Ataturk. Pity. Let's go to free trade. That gives us a bonus to pretty much everything, because free trade is uh, the best trade. Right, industrial tree complete. Military youth. It will also increase the popularity of fascism, thus increasing our stability a little bit. Paramilitarism. Industrial concern. Fate of Czechoslovakia and Zoxomist Italy. Germany will soon attack Poland, and that is when we strike as well. Advanced computing machine. Italy joins the Axis. Mod of Ribbentrop. Attack on Poland comes next. Hmm, I could join the Axis right now if I wanted to. But I don't want to. Not yet. Let's improve relations with the Allies. With Britain and France. Poland refuses German ultimatum. Germany attacks Poland. They're at war with the British and the French. Good. Now it's our time to justify war goals. Let's pick our targets. The viable targets for us are Bulgaria, Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia. Bulgaria and Afghanistan offer the most value and Afghanistan is actually the best target for us. But Bulgaria has quite many factories that we could use. So I guess I'll try Bulgaria first. Justify war goal in Bulgaria, 190 days and simultaneously also on Afghanistan. That's a long time. Oh, you have an advisor that makes it more difficult. God damn it. That's going to waste some political power because I already started this justification. But let's justify on Afghanistan first and on Bulgaria second. This will be more or less simultaneous because of that. And that's maybe not the best for our armies, but I should be able to handle both of them. We'll see. We have a desert specialist and that should feel right at home in Afghanistan. And you go to Bulgaria. What does Germany want? Docking rights? Sure, we're gonna be friends with them. And we have to monitor Bulgaria and Afghanistan to see if the Allies don't guarantee them, because we don't want to fight the Allies. I could also attack Greece, but Greece can be very problematic. We'll leave them alone this time. Poland about to fall, unfortunately. Poland capitulates, and they attack the Benelux. Will you honor the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact? Probably yes. Use the Sarkbase Eastern Poland, yeah. And the Germans are getting into France now. Even Luxembourg falls to the Germans. Bulgaria is a fascist sympathizer and we could easily create a faction with them. But we are just conquer them instead. Resistance has gone down very significantly. We can switch to civilian oversight now. Germans going north. Denmark capitulates. 
In the meantime, Japan is going into China. We might want to get involved. I'm still not sure if I want to. We could get into Xinjiang through Afghanistan. There's a small opening here. Might just be enough. Yugoslavia joins the Allies. We're not really bothered. We did not intend to invade Yugoslavia. Equipment effort complete. Thanks to that, we'll get the best guns very soon. Justification on Afghanistan is complete. Let's declare war immediately and see how it goes. Looking good so far. Very good, actually. Shang-Chi capitulates. If we want to get in on the fight in China, we should hurry up. Hungary joins the Axis. We have two choices after we're done with Bulgaria and Afghanistan. We could go after Saudi Arabia, Yemen and Oman, or we could go after China through Xinjiang. Afghanistan is not really offering any resistance. Bulgaria, did you get any guarantees? You did not. There is a chance they'll join the Axis and basically ruin my plans, but we'll see about that. Declare war on Bulgaria. Mm, a bit more resistance here. We should still be able to win. I do have a navy. I guess I could do a naval invasion. In the meantime, best guns. Extra research thought too. And I guess a captain of industry. Yeah, Bulgaria is offering up some resistance. With a naval invasion it shouldn't be too difficult, but for now it is. Afghanistan is almost done. Oh, I forgot to justify a new war goal. Let's quickly do Saudi Arabia. Need six more political power. That's fine, I'll wait. I should have started justifying as soon as we take as soon as we attack Bulgaria. In the meantime, Afghanistan, annex. As always, there is a chance they'll get a guarantee, but I'm still counting on the fact that the Allies are rather busy. All right, Saudi Arabia, there we go. And you guys told me in the comments that apparently now you can schedule multiple naval invasions from the same port. Let's see if that is in fact correct. It is. Oh, well, that simplifies things. I can now do infinite naval invasions that will all just take seven days to prepare. Okay, go. Hmm. Is Varna defended? Probably, but we can send one of these invasions there just to see. Yes, Varna is defended, but we're about to land nine units over here. No, we're not, because this did not complete properly. All right, you help them. And you try to take Varna. It's not very well defended, and once we get the port, we're set. Of course, if we don't get the port... No, we did. Beautiful. Create a new front line over here. Soviet influence in Europe and advanced competing machine complete. Now Bulgaria doesn't stand a chance. Assassination of Trotsky. Well, as I mentioned in the last video, he is completely useless in the current version of the game, so not really a loss. Do not leave the port undefended ever. Alright, let's leave them to just do their thing. That's gonna take a while, but we're going to win. Wish I could attack Romania, but somehow they're still guaranteed by France, and they were from the beginning of the game. Oh, interesting. I could get Romania into my own faction. I could create a faction with Romania. Still, I guess I don't really need them. They will join the Axis and fight the Soviet Union eventually, so we can just join the Axis then. I don't think I'll have enough time to get in on the action in China. Is Yemen and Oman worth conquering? Did they do the factory focuses? It's not worthless, but it's not going to bring me much. Still, my territory will be bigger and will look better. Again, we could have attacked Greece, but Greece is problematic because Italy eventually attacks Greece. And if this war took too long, Greece would join the Allies and thus drag us into a war with the Allies, which we don't want. I feel like I need to intervene in China, but if I attack them now, Saudi Arabia will join the Chinese United Front. I guess I'll have to defeat Saudi Arabia first. Bulgaria is mine. And next, please. Oh, see, Italy will attack Greece. 20 days for the justification. I guess I won't need that much time to defeat them. Should I start justifying on China yet? Okay, I will. 45 days. Hopefully that doesn't generate enough tension for Saudi Arabia to get guaranteed. And we can take out Yemen and Oman later. Not really anything worthwhile to spend political power on. Let's do naval effort just for the free dockout so that we can get more convoys done. Justification on Saudi Arabia is complete. Declare war. And be quick about it, please. Yo, Rush Medina. It does have a victory point. And then go over here. We need them to be done for soon. And you guys need to be aggressive because we need to break through here. Not sure if China will call Xinjiang immediately. We might need to justify a separate war goal. But the time will be uh, shorter if we are already at war with China. Let's not declare until we're done with Saudi Arabia though. If we do that, Saudi Arabia joins the Chinese United Front and suddenly we get Japanese territory over here. That equipment is actually gonna come in handy. Let's annex Saudi Arabia. Looking better. Those British bits are a bit of an issue, but we can live with that. Now it's time to declare war on China. Let's see if Xinjiang joins the war. I guess I can justify a separate war goal. Oh, I could join the Japanese faction for this. Um, sure, I guess I can do that. Let's join Japan. 
and Japan, I wanna join your wars, yes, join, and get across to Sinkiang quickly. They will defeat China soon, I wanna make sure I get a piece of the pie. Legionary Romania joins Axis, as anticipated, we will go after the Soviet Union together soon. Now with Sinkiang, getting across here is crucial, if we can't do that, we're pretty much not going to be able to get anything in the war. I mean, I could ferry my troops over to China and just get some more score from there, just in case I'm not able to get across to Sinkang. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna work here. China's almost done and we only need like 2% of the war score to get a lot of provinces in China. Best the guns complete. Improved infantry equipment 3. Oh, it's free France. From afar it looked like re-France. Like France, but redone. Let's observe China's capitulation progress, because when they're at 100%, I want to still use uh, the fact that we're at war with them to get some quick work justifications. 100% all right, they're gonna capitulate in a moment. I'll probably not get anything in the peace deal unless I'm really lucky, we'll see in a moment. But right now what I can do is use this to get very quick war goals. 25 days and 85 days. Should I get another one? I could possibly get Tibet if I'm able to, you know, steal the puppet from Japan as usual. We will be bordering Tibet. How long will the justification take? 275, not worth it. We'll just do it normally, if it's an opportunity that we can actually use. There is a possibility that not everyone will be involved in the peace conference, and for example, Sikyang will be able to, you know, be killed, but um, it's not a certainty. Okay, this is looking good. We might actually be able to get China out of this. Let's see, is communist China going to get a next? What's this area called? Shangxi with two A's. This is it. So they're going to get annexed by Japan, which means I might be able to get a communist China puppet that will provide manpower if we need it. All right, all right. In order to get all of this, we first need to pick the cheapest province in China. That is Zunyi for nine. We take everything, we untake the cheapest one, puppet them with the cheapest one, and then we untake the rest. It's very cheap and will block Japan from taking this territory. And now we have a tiny Chinese puppet. China is not that great as a puppet. They have uh, negative modifiers to manpower and all that. Fortunately, since Japan is annexing communist China, I can pass many, many times, just take all this territory for myself and then release communist China, if I so choose to get their endless manpower. I need 528 points. Wait a minute, that's why I set up an auto-clicker on my Razor mouse. Let's try that. Oh, so much better. The mouse actually has a feature that, you know, it's not a software auto-clicker, it's inside the mouse. Cool. With that many points, I can take the territory for myself. Wonderful. And turn. Done. We have the Turkish Empire in China, with a little bit of China inside that China. We could release communist China as a puppet. See if they don't get guaranteed. They shouldn't. It's gonna be very quick just to get... Uh, okay, never mind. Britain guaranteed Yemen. Damn it. Okay, let's cancel that. Let's see if they have enough... Oh, right, the war ended so I can't finish technology sharing. No matter, it's not that important to us anyway. Let's do resistance suppression instead. And where was I? Oh yes, Oman. It's 85 days. Maybe Britain won't have enough political power to guarantee them. Let's risk that. If they do, I'll just cancel the justification. And you guys go to Tibet. We'll try conquering them as well. It's not necessary for any of my plans at all. But I do have to do something until it's the right moment to attack the Soviet Union. Might as well try for Tibet. See, I was thinking of provoking them to attack me and Order 66 in them, but... Uh, it's not really necessary right now. I guess I can always just attack CM if I so choose. For now, though, a Soviet Union is our next victim. Well, that and maybe Oman and Tibet. We'll see. You know what? Let's release Communist China as a puppet. It's gonna look cool. A China inside a China. I can still attack Tibet from their territory, although there is a small chance they'll be able to call in Japan. I never know uh, when the puppets are able to do that and when they're not. 79 factories. War goal on Oman is complete. Let's declare war immediately and not call in any allies. Now let's try justifying on Tibet. Romania gives Bessarabia to the Soviets. Oman is taken. Let's annex. Pity I couldn't get Yemen, but the Allies do have to meddle, don't they? And taking Tibet, possibly Bhutan and Nepal, should take pretty much as much time as we need to wait until we attack the Soviets. We can also take Japan out in the meantime if I so choose. Don't see any need for it right at this moment. Apart from getting a massive amount of territory, of course. That could be a justifiable need. How much manpower does Communist China have? 
11 million. Not that much, but, you know, every bit helps. Germany breaks model of Ribbentrop. Okay, good. Uh, we're not going to join right away. We need uh, Germany to exhaust the Soviet Union. When the Germans get around Moscow, we'll probably strike. Also, the added bonus is that we can take uh, the Japanese with us to harass the Soviets together. And done with almost all the research we will ever need. Who's fighting Xinjiang? Oh yeah, right. Xinjiang is a puppet of Japan, so they're fighting the British Raj. Justification on Tibet is complete. Let's declare war immediately and start new justification on both Nepal and Bhutan. We will have to call in our puppet. I do hope they're not allowed to call in other members of the alliance. Puppets should not be allowed to do that. I forgot to start producing the best guns. Tibet capitulates. Take all states, please. This is a bit of a separated enclave, but it's all right. And once we're done with Bhutan and Nepal, it should be about time to fight the Soviets. Pretty I couldn't get Yemen. As usual, we do have to monitor who gets guaranteed, but probably nobody will. Let's see if I can send convoys to the Chinese Empire. Not sure I'll be able to, because there is no land connection between our capitals. No, looking alright. Mexico joins the Allies. Shock and awe complete. And Hungary got Slovakia. Oh, my gun reserves. Very large. I could use them to steal Chinese manpower. Let's start land lease. Send them some more convoys, and then I'll send them some guns and use that to next them. Excessive conscription, not that I need it, but we do have to spend that political power somewhere. Oh, damn it. Nepal got guaranteed. We have to cancel the justification. And same for Bhutan. That's a pity. Bloody Britain. Always making trouble. I might have to destroy them for it. We'll see. Ireland joins the Allies. Hungary proclaims Greater Hungary is always weird to me. Yunnan expanding quite a bit. I'm gonna need to make a tiny division, just so we can steal that manpower. Deploy a lot of these, please. Like 2,000. Let's cancel the focus. I'm gonna need a lot of political power to annex China. Fall of Rome, really? Indeed. What if I just build some stuff in their territory? That's working fast. We can lower the autonomy. All right, I guess I'll finish some of my own factories and then just uh, continue building stuff in China to speed things up here. Deploy the units. Copy these, edit them down, so that we can have a lot of small units uh, that don't even use our own manpower. It's gonna be tiny from China, getting a lot of manpower back. Gonna have to do a lot of tricks like this to get what's ours. I wonder if I have enough time. Italy is actually making an incursion down here. Maybe if I revoked their naval access. Let's cancel the docking rights. The Soviet Union will fall, we just don't want it to fall too quickly. Their autonomy is going down, but it is going down a bit too slowly. You know what, it looks like I have to actually start fighting the Soviets. Let's get our guys on the border. Two armies will suffice for now. Give them orders. And justify a war goal on the Soviet Union. 30 days, that's fine. British Malaya capitulates. Yeah, Japan is doing quite well. Justification on the Soviets is complete. Let's declare war. And should I call in Japan? I'm not sure. If I call in Japan, of course, it's going to make the victory easier, but Japan will probably want stuff. And I would prefer them to not have stuff. Green across the board. Good. Oh, and then at least from Japan, one convoy on a monthly basis. Nice. We're currently only using two armies against the Soviet Union, but um, it looks like it's enough. And we're up to 8% war participation, which is not too bad considering how much fighting the Germans have done. Land lease is not doing much, building is doing quite a lot. Quit India movement? Not my problem. It's somebody's problem, but not mine. Hmm, Italy is getting quite a lot of territory down here. Let's cast the Germans for military access. Yes, they are willing to give it to me. Great, I might use it later. Italy, thank you. Hungary, thank you. Romania, great. Ah, military access can be so easily used against them. Turkish Empire acquiring Soviet territory. And we can annex China. I'm not sure if we have enough troops to take advantage of their manpower. Let's see. We have a thousand. That's not that much. But let's have a look. You have seven million manpower. All right, so that should be sufficient. Let's create one of their templates. Something big, please. This one's big. Infantry template seven. Switch all of you to that. See if we get all the Chinese manpower. What? Just one million? Did I do something wrong? Oh, now it's zero. Okay, I did absorb all the manpower. Now we annex China's ours. Well, not all the China, so this China is still not ours. But it doesn't really matter. We can still give territory back to them and then try annexing uh, them yet again to draw the manpower yet again. I already tried it once and it didn't work. However, that was in a previous version of the game. Maybe we should see if it works now. So for now... You'll go back to the tiny template. Here we go, and look at that manpower grow. That's quite something, isn't it? We're at around 10 million manpower if you include the training and the people in the field. 
Uh, speaking of training, let's cancel that. So now let's see if I can draw even more manpower by giving this territory back to the other China. Probably not. It did not work in the previous version of the game, but I can see if it still doesn't work. Just prove that it still doesn't work. I'm going to return territory to reorganized nationalist China, who's of course my puppet. And they did get some more manpower. Hmm, interesting. Although if they did get extra manpower, what if I released communist China again? I don't think that will work at all, but we can use this to check to see if we can get actual infinite manpower by re-releasing China over and over again. I don't think so, but I can try it. So let's now annex them. Let's build you more factories. They only have 500,000, that's nothing for China. Maybe because we drained the rest. Still, we'll see. Still a long way to go with the Soviets. We are at almost 20%. Norway capitulates. Liberation of Paris? Really? Interesting. Might be a good moment to turn against the Germans soon. The Germans kind of stopped pushing into the Soviet Union. I might need to call in Japan because this has kind of stalled. We can now annex China. So let's see if we can get even more manpower. First we check how much manpower they have. Half a million, not a lot. Create a colonial template, whatever really, just some infantry template. Switch all of you to that. And that should drain all their manpower. It has been drained, now we annex them. They have been annexed. And you switch back to the tiny template. Okay, yeah, we did get some of that manpower. I mean, we got all that they had, just didn't have that much. Right, so what happens if I now release communist China again? It used to not work. Let's release communist China once again and see if they got their manpower back oh my manpower went down was i actually getting manpower from the territory yes it seems so okay good to know we have verified we can only steal manpower from them once good to know well it's a pity i wasted so many resources and political power on annexing it over and over again because now i need to annex them once again still it's good to know. Let's annex them one more time. But looking at the bright side, at least now we know for sure. I think I should call Japan in. Will you join me in my war on the Soviet Union? Please join. Yeah, it's taking too long. It should be over by now. Creating some more armies and sending them to the front lines. Yeah, Germany's not doing so good. Might be time to destroy them. For Vladivostok, Japan is uh, getting in on that. Mongolia capitulates. Yeah, Japan is powerful, isn't it? Doing quite a lot here. Here, have some convoys. Convoys are a great currency for decreasing autonomy. Germany is influencing my politics. Why, though? We're like 100% fascist. It seems like the Allies are gonna win. The United States have taken over all of Italy. But Germany is retaking France. France has capitulated. Again. Trying to demands French Indochina and gets it. Okay, looks like the Soviets will finally be defeated soon. Can I actually garrison German territory? Let's see. We do have military access and we're at war. Will you guys move or stay? You move! Okay, good. Let's garrison their territory. They've annoyed me a bit. I think I'm going to conquer them. And since they are giving me military access and I am at war so I can use a garrison order to send troops there, let's do just that. Oh, and the Soviet Union has finally capitulated. What the hell happened here? Oh right, I'm still <laughs> I'm still doing the garrison order, which is why I see it like this and I can actually apparently take German territory. No, I can't really do that, but that's why it looks like this. Looks like they took all of that because it doesn't have the numbers. Alright, alright, can I puppet the Soviet Union? I indeed can puppet the Soviet Union. We shall do so. Do we want Finland and Mongolia as well? No, no, just puppet the Soviet Union and turn. Germans took a lot of stuff. So take all states, cost twenty-five thousand for me. But if I use my puppet for it, it's just 2,000. Let's take the Soviet Union. I need to take all the coasts and all the territory that connects to other countries that are involved. This way, the Japanese and the Germans won't be able to take this territory. They will be able to release countries from it if they so choose, but they won't be able to take it. Oh, that's too much. Can't take that much. All right, let's reset and pass. Okay, this way we'll separate uh, the Soviets from everything else, and the Germans and the Japanese won't be able to take anything inside here. They will be able to release puppets from it, so uh, we have to watch out for that. We have some points left, so let's take Finland. And can I take Mongolia as well? No, it's too expensive. And turn. Who do you puppet? Holland. Oh, I forgot it. That's fine. Pass, and pass, and I should be able to give the Soviets a lot of their territory. I could take parts of this territory directly for myself, but uh, it's more convenient to just annex the puppet. Bessarabia, sure, let's take it as well. See, I didn't get that much participation, but I did get a lot 
of territory. Russian Empire was puppeted. Looking good, isn't it? Turkish Empire owns the Russian Empire. We're going to annex them soonish. But they do have four million manpower. It would be a pity to let it go to waste. So, do we kill the Germans now? We should. Will my guys that were sent on garrison order still go and do that garrison order? Looks like they will. Let's build some factories for the Russians. My troops seem to be settling in well in German territory. Well, that's an ex Germany. Send some troops onto the borders with Hungary, Romania and Italy. Remember, we're still allied with Japan, we could use them. We own stuff here directly, but we don't need to worry about it too much. And will I need to worry about naval invasions? Possibly. This one army will go here just in case. I think it's time. Let's justify on Croatia. Hopefully this bit doesn't get conquered in the meantime and doesn't invalidate my justification. I can also justify on, say, Hungary, but then I would have to take my troops out of it. United States is justifying against me. I don't think they are, really. Defense of the Pacific. I don't think that applies to me. I think that applies to my allies. See, I'm big. I would have the same color as we do. Maybe they didn't think we would go this far. I love having Russia as a puppet. I'm paying six factories for this. Imperial Conference. Surely you have better things to do right now. Yeah, the others are doing pretty well against Germany. Once I join the fight, Germany should be no more. I guess I could use Russian manpower to make these units bigger. Three million. Hmm. I just copy Strelkovaya Divizia and modify it a bit. It's gonna take 1,000 infantry equipment. So 500 of these is gonna be 500,000 infantry equipment. We don't have that much. So let's make it smaller. Let's get it down to four units. It's still gonna be quite an effective unit. I just switch all of you to it. Inside German territory. It will be much more resilient that way. How much manpower did I absorb from Russia? Two million. Almost there. War goal in Croatia is complete. Time to destroy Germany. And every update, every video, someone comments that Order 66 no longer works. It works. It always works. I mean, they might patch it someday, but they still haven't. And to those of you that don't think it does, please watch. I declare war on Croatia, who is an ally of the Germans. I do not declare war on the Germans. I do not join a war on the Germans. I declare it on their ally. My troops are in German territory and Hungarian and Romanian territory, not in Croatia, who I'm attacking. Now, let's unpause this. Vichy France has joined. Germany has not joined yet. Come on, Germany. Yeah, if Germany doesn't join, I don't have much to show you. It was a bit underwhelming, wasn't it? Ah, see, Romania joined. I had troops in Romania. Those that were in territories that did not have enemy troops instantly took control of the land. Now my attack can commence. At least, the attack on Romania. I could call in Japan. I wonder if Japan would join. They would not. It would be nice if I got Japan to fight the Germans, though. Well, at least we're taking Romania. Quite effectively. I could attack Hungary. I could attack Hungary. I could just declare war on Hungary. If I did so, I would need to withdraw all the troops from Hungarian territory. Uh, but I might need to do that. I don't think I have any troops in Italy, so let's declare on Italy as well. Maybe they will convince the Germans to join. Fall of New South Wales. Australia has capitulated. Great news, all oh, these are dark times. Interesting. Well, these are dark times, but also great news. The British want military access. Would they give military access? Yes, they would. Let's ask the British for military access. Same for France and the United States and Canada and Mexico, if I ever need to use it. Ah, Italy has been called in. Oh, seriously? Interesting. So Germany never joined the war and I didn't do enough fighting with Italy, I guess. So we're getting a separate peace deal against Vichy France, Croatia and Romania. I could puppet Romania. Well, I do have to pass anyway. don't have enough points to get anything. Supervised state. Vichy France. No, I wanted to puppet France. I'll just take territory. No, they puppeted Romania. The borders are going to be awful, aren't they? Seems like my plan backfired. Not completely, though. I can still attack Hungary. Occitania. That's fine, I guess. I am still at war with... Who, with Italy, who already capitulated. All right, I need to redo stuff here. Looks like I'm going to need to attack Hungary and get all my troops out of Hungary. I wonder if Germans will join the war this time. Probably not. Also, why am I giving this territory back to France? I'm not allied to them. Romania capitulated again to Hungary this time. I'll attack Hungary. Yes, I can. Greater Hungary, sorry. Should I call myself Greater Torior? Attack, attack everyone. Germans are not called in. Well, I can't achieve my objective of beating up the Germans. It's not a particularly important objective, but it's fun to do. Hungary seems to not really be able to resist. Hmm, my troops are fighting someone in German territory. I don't know who. Can I see this battle? A Hungarian guy going through. Okay. Germans still want to join. 
I might need to attack them directly and just pull back all these troops here. Hungary is being taken care of. Actually, that's not too bad because I can eliminate, you know, the Axis one by one without even touching the Germans and then just fight the Germans. Germany seems to be quite an unreliable ally. I think I'm gonna need to annex Russia after all. Let's see how much manpower do you have left. A million. Okay, let's add some more troops to the template. Go to 20. Make sure all the manpower is absorbed. All the manpower is absorbed. Now annex Russia. Turkey grew a bit bigger. Now let's give the Germans a moment because they might actually uh, see that have an unprotected border here and declare war on me. They probably won't, but they might. And if not, I'll just pull my troops back and attack them normally. Hungary capitulated. Good. What's that? Bosnia Herzegovina is now a puppet. So I'm just gonna take as much stuff as I can to make my borders look good. That will have to do. So, is Germany alone in this war? Wait a minute. Republic in Italy. Seems like my war against the Axis without Germany made it much easier for the Allies because they could just annex Italy. Alright, seems like it's time to attack the Germans directly. 30 days for the war god justification. The Allies have balkanized the Balkans. That's one army group. And another one is gonna approach from the east. My attack orders might look a bit convoluted, but they are actually very carefully crafted through a process that I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. See, first I create a front line, and then I very carefully and meticulously create the attack orders from it. Something like this. And let's add some more to it. This results in an intricate plan that my enemy cannot understand. Well, my generals can't understand it either, but the uh, important thing is that the enemy can't do that. Everyone, be super aggressive, get in position, and then kill Germany, please. World's a bit fragmented, apart from the Turkish Empire. Switzerland, oh, finally, vow neutrals. We need to be out of German territory soon. See, these attack orders really look confusing, and we don't really have good counterintelligence, so the enemy sees very confusing attack orders when they spy on us. Oh, right, let's cancel that focus. I'll get more political power. Justification is complete. Let's declare war on the Germans. I still have divisions in their territory. Where? Can I cancel my military access? This way, any troops I have in their territory should get exiled. Oh, here you are. How did you get lost here? Yeah, he was not part of an army. That's why he was left here. Let's disband him. How about now? I can finally declare war on the Germans. I could call in Japan. I don't need to, but I could. Declare war. This shouldn't take too long. Calling in some people. Oh, they could actually attack me from here, but at the scale of this war, it doesn't really matter. I wonder how much war score I'll get. Just 1% so far. They are exhausted, and we have recovered. As you can see, the Allies are also making gains. We have simplified things for them by, you know, piecing out the other axis. This is actually going very, very quickly. Cleaning up Germany. German Czechoslovakia has capitulated to us. Huge Turkey is destroying tiny Germany. The carefully laid out attack plans seem to be working. We are very close to victory, let's try and rush Berlin. Then again, maybe I shouldn't be in a hurry. The longer it takes, the more say I'll have at the peace conference. And we did take Berlin. Alright, rush for Hamburg next. You run to Rostock and Lübeck as well. And so on and so forth. They should be capitulating any minute now. Now we get the Germans capitulating to me. Wait, is the war still going on? Greater Finland and the new Mongol Empire. Seriously, they're m both major powers now. Apparently, oh crap. Oh, I had to turn the game off in the meantime, and now I think the AI reset itself a little bit and Nationalist Spain just joined the Axis. I do hope they don't join uh, the war. Greater Finland and New Mongol Empire are major powers. Greater Finland with one total factory. New Mongol Empire with 8 to 12. Anyway, I have dispatched forces to take care of them. It's gonna take them a while to get there though. And Nationalist Spain has just bloody joined uh, the war. All right, let's send an army group to kill them. Can you start the naval invasion now? Yes, you can. If they don't have any troops, that will be dealt with quickly. All right, that's done, Greater Finland. Now we're encroaching on the new Mongol Empire. And let's see what's going on in Spain. Spain is already halfway across France. Looks like we're going to need to kill them as well. They are foolishly at war with all of the Allies, for no possible gain. Mm, I forgot I annexed Russia, but I'm on free trade, so I'm running out of steel. I need to switch that up. We just have to destroy Spain. Or maybe I should do a massive naval invasion. New Mongol Empire has been taken care of. Let's try that naval invasion thing. If we get one port, we win. 
I think. Okay, we got more than one port. Let's let these guys finish. All of you land in northern Spain. Supplies may be a bit scarce. Fortunately, I have a lot of industry that I can dedicate to increasing that supply. Hmm, stacking that many troops here was probably not the best idea. I thought if I'd build infrastructure and ports that would be fine, but apparently it's just too many. Some more naval invasions, maybe? All right, this doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just start. Looking good. Disrupt the Spanish forces. This looks promising. The new invasions didn't do much on their own, but they did distract the defenders making them leave their posts. Can I take Madrid? Finally, it's done. The United States already making supervised states. Puppeting Germany should be a good choice. Let's do that. This way the territory will be cheaper. Do the same to Spain. I could satellite various Spains. We focus on Germany. As you can see, the territory prices go way down. So I'm going to pass a few times to feed all of Germany to Germany, because it's rather cheap to do so. Mm, don't have enough points. Okay, let's pass again. All right. That's everything that goes directly to Germany. Now let's take some territory for ourselves. We do have a Spanish subject, so let's feed them the rest of Spain. And that's it. And the peace conference. There's some Spain in my Spain, and also Catalonia. And we own a lot of stuff here. What's this? That is Belarus, who is um, independent and democratic. Okay, who released you? I don't know. We could annex you, we don't really need to do that. But I think I do need to annex Germany to make my borders look better. Germany and Spain don't have enough political power for both immediately, so of course let's start with Germany. Some land lease perhaps. Here have 2,000 convoys, and that'll be enough to annex them. And also, Adolf is still in power, and they have 5 million manpower. Cool, I should probably steal that while I'm at it. Okay, return home, everybody. Come with me to Istanbul. The United Kingdom announced Balkan Diplomatic Initiative. Well, you did create this. Japan and the Allies are fighting in my territory. And we can now annex Germany. First, let's steal their manpower. It's not going to be a lot of manpower. Don't have enough units to fully utilize that, I think. But at least we'll get some. We're currently at 3 million manpower. Some balls. Goes to zero. Perfect. So, let us annex Germany. Yeah, right. You guys go back to your regular templates. Some manpower returned to the pool. Not that much, actually. The Turkish Empire now spans quite a large amount of territory. And I started talking about the Turan region. I'm pretty sure we own it. It's somewhere around here. I don't remember the exact borders. You know what? I think that's enough for today. At this point, it would be rather tedious to finish a world conquest, but I'm going to tell you how I would do it, just so you know. We have two options here. Either we take out Japan or we take out allies first. And then we take out the other. If we were to take out Japan, I would station my troops all around their territory, but mostly in the home isles, and then I would declare war on Siam. This way Japan would jump in to defend Siam, and we would get their home isles without a fight. Well, without a major fight. Then we could do the same to the Allies. If we decide to kill the Allies first, we do have military access from pretty much all of them. So we could do the same thing, just station our troops everywhere, then justify on some smaller country that they would defend, like, say, Netherlands, declare war in the Netherlands, and our sleeper cells in the United States and United Kingdom and Canada and Mexico wake up and kill everyone. Well, I say sleeper cells, just millions of troops that were given military access for some reason. And while we're still allied with Japan, Japan might want to help us with that. And they are quite powerful and actually very helpful. So it might be a good idea to do that first. And of course, after it's done, we could betray Japan. Anyway, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and do let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. Also a reminder, this video was sponsored by Conqueror's Blade. So check out the link in the description below to learn more about the game. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.